Peace be with you. Welcome, friends, to the celebration of the second Sunday of Easter. My name is Reverend Christopher McCloskey, pastor of the Brockway Presbyterian Church. And though as I record this, there is snow on the ground, it is indeed still Easter time. We must remember that after his resurrection, Jesus remained on earth for 40 days, appearing to many people and performing many signs and miracles. This time is known as Easter Tide, a time that ends with Pentecost and the arrival of the Holy Spirit. So again, let me wish you a very happy Easter. May God's blessings be ever upon you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And though Jesus lives, though by conquering sin and death, Jesus changed everything, and though we know that we have been promised eternal life, mercy, and salvation, the world at the moment is growing rather restless. Having been in quarantine now for some time, many people's patience is growing thin, nerves have been frayed, and our resolve has weakened. Now that the sickness we face is beginning to come under control, now that the fear of death feels further away, other fears have grown and taken its place. Fears about businesses and income, fears about if things are delayed much longer, we will never recover. Fears that jobs will be permanently lost. Fears that people will become hungry and homeless. I, like you, desire nothing more than a return to normal, but this cannot come at the expense of human life. To ignore the sacredness of every human life is to draw the ire of God upon us. And I believe that it is by God and his favor alone that will save us in the end. So let us look to God and call upon his holy name, let us show him that we love humanity as much as he does. While maintaining social distance, let us come together to find a way to feed those who are hungry and shelter those without a roof over their heads. Let us come together to find ways to share what we have so that all might live. Let us face this crisis as a test of our compassion and kindness. Let us be willing to sacrifice and to suffer so that all may have life. So do not fear. Trust in the Lord. Do what is right. Do what is good. Today's reading comes from Psalm 85. Listen and hear of God's promise of peace. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand, for those who fear him, and his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other, faithfulness will spring from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. God will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, guide us and protect us still. Shower us with your blessings and help us find joy again in you. Calm our hearts, O Lord. Send to us your peace. Amen. We hear in John's Gospel that following his resurrection, Jesus appeared before his disciples, but for some reason one of the eleven Thomas was not with them. Upon returning to the group, Thomas was told that Jesus had appeared to them, but he doubted their words. Thomas likely believed that they had all had a shared delusion. The group had been hiding inside in fear for some time following Jesus' arrest. He likely believed that either the fear or the grief had gotten to them. Maybe he even believed that the others were playing a cruel prank on him in order to entertain themselves and pass the time as they were cooped up inside. It is hard to fault Thomas for his disbelief. And though he had witnessed Jesus resurrect others, now Jesus was dead with no one to resurrect him. And so he continued in disbelief, despite his friends reassuring him of the truth of their claim. 
It took Jesus himself reappearing again, allowing him to put his fingers in Jesus' hand and side in order to get Thomas to believe. And ever since, he has been branded doubting Thomas. Though I am not sure if this is entirely fair, I think had it been any other disciple who had been absent for Jesus' return, they too would have doubted. If it were me, I would have doubted and I bet you would have doubted too. It is only natural to be skeptical when we receive news that is too outlandish to be true. We especially doubt when the news we receive is just too hard to hear, too overwhelmingly negative to accept. We reject what we cannot handle, and right now being in quarantine has become too much for many of us to handle. But it does not negate the fact that staying in isolation is necessary to save lives. Just as Thomas's doubt did not negate the truth of Jesus' resurrection. We must not wait to see more bodies piled up in morgues and hospital hallways. We should not wait and he, hear and see nurses and doctors begging and crying for us to stay at home. We must strive to accept our current reality the best that we can. And it is hard I, on a daily basis, have struggled with my worrying. I have struggled with my idle thoughts, taking advantage of me and whipping me up into a panic. And in these moments, all I can do to turn is turn to God in prayer. I cry out in the midst of my distress, and God has answered me. Psalm 85 is one such reply. Here we are reassured of the presence of God's peace. We hear again that God's good news is peace, his shalom. Psalm 85 is a reminder that God will make everything right again. It is a call to release our worries because the future is in God's hands. It is a promise that God will restore us again. Just as courage is not the absence of fear, but the overcoming of it, faith is not the absence of doubt, but the overcoming of it. We will all feel doubt. We will all feel afraid. But this does not have to diminish our faith and our love of God. If you truly believe that Jesus lives, then nothing is impossible. Getting through this crisis is not impossible. Getting through this quarantine and isolation is not impossible. Rebuilding the economy and prospering again is not impossible. I certainly believe that the economy will recover and new jobs will be created once again. But we cannot save it by offering up the sick, the elderly, and the vulnerable as sacrifices to die for that cause. Jesus didn't die so that the economy would thrive. He died so that all would know life. So let us, by the power of Christ, make peace with our current situation. For if this quarantine lasting a little longer saves even one more life, then it is worth it. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us turn to his words for guidance. Both in prayer and in scripture, we will hear again of God's peace, For peace is one of the greatest gifts that comes from faith. A peace that gives us the resolve to stand stalwart again against fear, anxiety, and selfishness. A peace that gives us the strength to do what is right even when it is hard and requires sacrifice. A peace that reassures us that God will make all things right again through his salvation, mercy, and grace. Christ lives so that all might live. Do your part and preserve the sacredness of life. Amen. Having heard again of how much God loves us, let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Out of our current distress, we cry out to you. Out of fear and anxiety, we call on your holy name. Come and make your presence known. Send to us your peace. We confess that we have grown tired of isolation, that we have grown tired and impatient with the world on pause. Send to us your peace so that we can endure a little longer. Strengthen us so that we might continue to be your disciples, sacrificing and serving for the sake of all. We pray for all of your agents of compassion, for doctors and nurses, for caregivers and support staff. We pray for all those who continue to work so that life can continue. We pray for first responders and for our leaders. Lend to them your strength and wisdom. 
We pray for your provision, Lord. Lead us in sharing and giving of ourselves so that all may live. We lift to you all the worries of our hearts. We turn over to you our anxieties and fears. Send to us, Lord, your forever peace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. While this may end our time of worship and prayer together, let each day, each moment of your life be an act of worship and praise to our loving God. Allow the peace of Christ to overcome you. Allow your doubt and worry to fade away. For nothing is impossible with the Lord. Rejoice, for Jesus lives. Peace be with you. Amen.